Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm delighted to be here today to take a major step in marking up this critical package of legislation. There is not a state or a district that hasn't been touched by this problem. 115 people die in this nation every day because of prescription, over, uh, prescription opioid overdose. My home state of Georgia stands among the top 11 states in the country with the most prescription opioid deaths according to the Georgia Department of Public Health. These are statistics that need to be urgently addressed. We've made great progress with the passage of the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act, but we have the opportunity to do more. I believe there are numerous challenges that our community health care providers and community leaders face, and these pieces of legislation will help them address many of those challenges. As a lifelong health care professional, I believe the key to filling any successful prescription is education. I co-authored legislation included in this markup that will give pharmacists additional tools to help detect fraudulent prescriptions. It's important to remember in the midst of this opioid epidemic that there are chronic pain patients in this country who still need to access their prescription pain medication. I'd like to commend the committee for the cooperation and bipartisanship on these bills and look forward to seeing this package on the president's desk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Amendment to H.R. 4275, offered by Mr. Carter. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes on this amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, deaths from drug overdose have risen in nearly every county across the United States with, 47, with over 47,000 Americans being lost each year due to overdose, the equivalent of about 115 people every day. More prescription opioids are being dispensed than ever before. In 2010, prescription opioid use in the U.S. translated into 693 milligrams of morphine per person, nearly double from 2007. This is a continuously growing problem with no simple solution. In our complex system of checks and balances, however, pharmacists are the last line of defense in the fight against prescription drug abuse. Under current law, pharmacists are required to exercise sound professional judgment when making a determination about the legitimacy of a controlled substance prescription. While the proper prescribing of controlled substances is the responsibility of the prescribing practitioner, pharmacists have a corresponding responsibility to ensure that controlled substances are only dispensed pursuant to a valid prescription issued for a legitimate medical purpose by a practitioner acting in the usual course of his professional practice. The Empowering Pharmacists in the Fight Against Opioid Abuse Act would require the Department of Health and Human Services, the Drug Enforcement Administration, and other federal agencies responsible for combating the opioid epidemic to produce and disseminate materials to pharmacists to provide guidance on when and how to refuse to fill a prescription that the pharmacist believes to be fraudulent. I urge you to support this common sense legislation led by myself and my colleague across the aisle, Representative Desagne, that will help improve the last line of defense against prescription drug abuse in our communities. And I yield back, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment. For what purpose is uh, the gentleman from Georgia seek recognition? To speak, uh, have an amendment at the desk, and I also want to speak on the bill. If there are no bipartisan amendments, the clerk will report the Carter Amendment. Amendment to H.R. 5483, offered by Mr. Carter. And the gentleman is recognized for five minutes on his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, in 2008, Congress strengthened prohibitions against distributing and dispensing controlled substances by passing the Ryan Haight Online Pharmacy Consumer Protection Act. The Ryan Haight Act made it illegal for a practitioner to dispense controlled substances through the Internet without at least one in-person patient evaluation. The legislation included the ability for the Attorney General to issue a special registration to health care providers to prescribe controlled substances via telemedicine in legitimate emergency situations such as a lack of access to an in-person specialist. However, the waiver process has never been implemented through regulation and thus some patients still do not have the emergency access to care to care their need. The Special Registration for Telemedicine Clarification Act directs the Attorney General with the Secretary of Health and Human Services to promulgate interim final regulations within 90 days of passage of the law. The bipartisan legislation will require the Attorney General to establish a registration process for practitioners to prescribe controlled substances using telemedicine. 62 million Americans living in rural communities are more likely to be older, poor, and suffer higher rates of chronic disease than their ur ur urban counterparts. Furthermore, a disproportionate num number of Americans living in rural communities are struggling with prescription opioid abuse. I urge you to support the bipartisan legislation co-led by my colleague, Representative Butos, 
to connect patients with the substance use disorder treatment they need without jeopardizing important safeguards to prevent misuse or diversion. Now, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to speak on the amendment. This amendment is being offered in response to a DEA request to lengthen the time in which they must publish rules for the establishment of the special waiver process. Under the introduced bill, DEA would have up to 90 days to complete this task. At their request, this amendment would extend this window to one year. I believe this is fair and it is my view that our committee should be accommodating to this minor request. Plus, finalizing rules for the special waiver process is on the unified agenda of the Justice Department and DEA, a signal that they understand the need to implement this provision of law. With this amendment and the passage of the underlying bill, Congress will require DEA to complete this long overdue special waiver process again, which they have already signaled they support. I urge your support of this amendment as well as your support of the underlying bill. Will the gentleman yield? I will. Mr. Chairman, I move to strike the last word. I understand that the FDA may currently require a risk evaluation and mitigation strategy, RIMS, to ensure that a medicine's benefits outweigh its risk. FDA may tailor the RIMS to the specific risks associated with a medicine. By mitigating those risks, the RIMS can allow patients safe access to medicines that otherwise could not be approved. Indeed, the FDA has used its RIMS authority to address the potential for abuse and misuse of certain opioid products. This bill could grant FDA overly broad disapproval and withdrawal authorities and could lead to questions about why these new statutory authorities are necessary in light of FDA's existing RIMS authority for controlled substances. I understand the sponsors are committed to working through these problems and I stand ready to help. I want to thank those involved, including rank, Ranking Member Green, for their diligent work on this issue. I yield back. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I would... Um, I appreciate the importance of enhancing the capabilities of PDMPs and want to thank the sponsors of the bill. I want to raise my concern with state PDMPs and the potential impact they have on access to non-opioid, non-narcotic drugs that are essential to epilepsy patients that are on Schedule 5, which subject doctors to having to run a query when prescribing. Including epilepsy medications in PDMPs could delay access to treatment that is critical for achieving and maintaining seizure control. People living with epilepsy who experience a delay in receiving their medication due to PM, PDMP requirements are at a high risk for seizures and related complications, including death. Furthermore, time spent by providers querying and reporting on scheduled epilepsy medications is time that could be better spent caring for patients. A number of states have already reduced query requirements for Schedule 5 epilepsy medications. I appreciate and thank the sponsor's work on this issue and stand ready to help address barriers to accessing medications for epilepsy patients. I thank the gentleman for yielding.